Well, good morning and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Clinton Griffiths on this beautiful day in Oklahoma. We've got a great show for you today, frankly, because there's a lot going on right now in Oklahoma agriculture. From wheat that's heading out, to corn that's being planted, to calving season that's winding down. So why don't we start with crops this morning and Tracy McMurphy, who gives us some good tips on checking for pests. There's a few pests out there that producers need to know how to identify and be able to, to decide if they need to treat their fields. So here to talk to us about some of those pests and some of those collection techniques is OSU Extension Entomologist Tom Royer. Tom, good morning. Good morning. So what are some of the pests that uh, producers need to be out looking for and what crops do they need to be looking at right now? Well, I, I would say right now the theme is aphids. Uh, there's probably aphid activity going on in alfalfa aphid activity going on in wheat that we're standing in right now and aphid activity that's going on in canola crops which are all uh, crops that are, that, are, that are actively growing right now and, and need to be taken care of. So as producers are going out into their fields how do they need to be finding these aphids or looking for the bugs? Well that's that's the, 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 the trick. Uh, we have different techniques depending on what field, uh, what crop we're working in. Okay. Uh, for example in wheat we have a system uh, of sampling that we call glance and go which is just a presence absence system um, it's been developed here at OSU over the uh, past four or five years and it allows us to go into a field very quickly and determine whether a field needs to be treated or not based upon an economic threshold that the grower can cal have calculated ahead of time mm -hmm. and then just pr print off a form go out and use that form in the field the nice thing about that form is it it can be folded and fit right in their back pocket. Right, so really convenient. Take, yeah, very convenient. Okay. And the nice thing about it is they don't have to count aphids. All they have to do is count tillers that have aphids on them and, and keep track of the tillers that have aphids on them. Okay. And then this form will let them know whether they should uh, do something with their field or whether they can get out of that field and move on to another field to um, check. So Tom, the technique's different in canola, right? Absolutely. Okay, great. Well, let's go take a look. All right. Okay, when we want to look for aphids in canola, what we're really looking for is, is, is uh, how, how many of these racemes have aphids on them. So for a producer, they need to know a couple things. They need to know how to recognize an aphid, mm -hmm. and then it's just very simple. They go along and keep a running tally of how many of these racemes, these flower heads, have aphids on them. And uh, I believe that we use a um, uh, threshold right now of 15%. So it's very simple. You just examine the top of the, the racine where the flowers are um, uh, and, and look to see if there's aphids. Uh, look at several, probably three or four, maybe five at a given location, given stop, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and keep a running total of that. And then we need to make sure that we go to other parts of the field so that we're getting a good representative sample of the whole field. Right. Because a lot of times aphids will be in hot spots mm -hmm. and then you might go into another area where there's no aphids at all. And we want to know what's going on in the whole field because we typically don't spot treat for aphids. We right. spray the whole field. So we need right. to know what's going on. So get a good field. cross section. Exactly. Okay, great. Are there any other things that we need to be concerned about in canola right now? Actually, uh, we got, we've had reports of diamondback moth being a problem in a major county and several of the west, northwestern counties of Oklahoma this year. Okay. Um, and it can be a pretty serious pest as well. Okay. And we have a different technique for sampling for diamondback moth. Great. Can you show us that? Sure. This is probably something that a lot of farmer producers and ranchers would have on their farm, just an old white bucket. Mm -hmm. And in this case, when we're looking for diamondback moth, a lot of times they'll be feeding on the, the leaves and the, um, the seeds and so forth. So we just uh, have them in a one square foot area, um, take the racines and we call this a shake bucket method. Shake it out. Yep, and it just is a question we knock everything off in the bucket. Okay. Uh, in a square foot area, we have to take at least five to 10 locations in the field so that we're again getting a good representative sample. Mm -hmm. And you just count the number that you're finding in the bucket. Okay. And then we take an ad, we, we look at 30 or 40 um, plants and get an estimate of uh, how many, I believe uh, what we use is, is the number of diamondback moths per square foot. Okay. 
that's, a, that's a, what we use to make a determination whether to treat or not. Okay, great. And when we're looking for aphids and alfalfa, there's some different techniques there, is that right? Yeah, we have a, another technique. So you, uh, you have to have an arsenal of things if you've got a lot of crops out sure. there. Okay, well, would you be able to show us that? Absolutely. All right, let's go. So Tom, we're out here to look at alfalfa, but if I'm not mistaken, this is not alfalfa, right? You're very observant. This is the closest thing we could come to uh, alfalfa on the station. At least it's a legume. Okay. And it, uh, but it looks like it's probably a winter crop out here. Uh, the thing is that it probably at least would support a lot of the same insects and it will serve our purposes okay. today. Okay, but, great. But we, you do know what you're talking about there. <laughs> Thank so. you. Okay, so we're going to look for some aphids. Right. Uh, in alfalfa right now, uh, alfalfa has three different uh, aphids that are typically a problem. Um, the spotted, the blue, and the uh, pea aphid. Okay. And uh, this is the time of the year when they can start building up uh, in numbers, and so it's really important for producers to be out there. Uh, the spotted and the blue alfalfa aphid can really cause damage to the alfalfa. They have a toxin in their saliva that can cause problems. So. Um, it requires regular checking. Okay. And we typically uh, use one of two techniques. You can use stem counts and the beet bucket like we showed before, mm -hmm. or the sweep net here, which is probably preferable for um, uh, experienced alfalfa growers because they can use it for a lot of other things as well. Okay, great. So I'll just go ahead and de demonstrate the uh, technique of sweeping. Okay. Um, we typically do it in a figure eight fashion. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we have to do different locations in the field. We typically take 30 sweeps at a stop. Okay. And we get through. Come three, four, five, six. Seven, You're going to kind of do it with purpose, eight, right? Kind of get 12, down in the plant. 30, yes. Yes, it has to be purposeful. Okay. And then when we're done, we close it up. And you can tell if it's purposeful if we have a lot of right. green Got some evidence. gunk on there. That means we've swept it pretty hard. Okay. And then when we're done, we just start opening up and take a count on whatever we have. You should have a little bit of foliage in there if you're doing a good job of sweeping. Mm -hmm. And you start pulling that out. And of course, out here with this crop, there's nothing in it. But <laughs> a nice that clean probably crop. wouldn't be the case. It probably wouldn't be the case in alfalfa. Okay, and you're going to do the several locations across your field, yes. get a nice even distribution of, of right. your insect we population. Want to make sure, yeah. Okay. It's always the case. We want to make sure that we're checking the whole field, getting representative samples, so we don't make a decision just based on one, one spot. hot spot. Right. We oftentimes like to try and avoid the edges of a field because you'll oftentimes see more insects along the edge of a field than okay. you will out in the middle. So okay. it's important to get in the field when right. we're taking samples. Okay, so you've shown us some really great techniques for the different crops to look at insects. Uh, what do producers need? Are there resources out there for them to then start making treatment decisions? Yes, we have a series of fact, uh, fact sheets that we keep up to date every year mm -hmm. uh, with uh, recommendations and suggestions if they need to, to control um, how they go about making decisions on making control and uh, we also provide um, very current uh, articles that we uh, put into the plant soil sciences newsletter or the pest e-alerts which are also available for online. anybody to use online. Okay, great. And we'll have links to those on the SunUp website. So right. great information. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you.